imagination. It's uh, in the West, they would cut off a single strand and use it to tie bags and other things. That's a really and now it's just hipster fashion. <laughs> I mean, you can oh, start the trend and cut how off. we have declined. <laughs> So how are y'all doing? Well, oh. awesome. Um, yeah. Thank you. Try to edge it up today a little bit, I guess. Contrast my Betty. And she braids. Um, so I guess first off, the unavoidable topic. There's been a huge fan response to Bughead in general. Yeah. Um, how do you feel about it, and do you aroused? <laughs> yeah. Aroused. <laughs> No, uh, yeah, it's flattering that people like it as much as they do. It's... I think it's because it's a little bit unexpected in a way, but, um, you know, because Jughead is kind of doing his own thing in the comics, so to see him relate to a, a girl is, people, it, they're excited about that. And um... I, I, think, I think also it's... Jughead has this real long history of being a woman hater and and multiple iterations he's asexual and most of his iterations he's aromantic and I think because this is a new universe and this is definitely a different iteration we were trying here I'll lean close just sorry no I'm just kidding though. Um, sound bite. this is something that was kind of uncharted territory sort of for the property and we didn't really know if it was gonna take uh, but it did, and people people really love it, and it got a huge response. There's, yeah, as we were doing research, you know, there's a lot of old snippets in the some of the original digests where Betty and Jughead were kind of these characters that flirted around, but Jughead was always like, oh. um, <laughs> well, it was because Betty was rejected by Archie, and he was always there to kind of be the shoulder to cry on, mm -hmm. and yeah. and I think from our show's perspective. They're both so opposite on the outside in their appearances, um, but they're, I think, very similar on the inside. They're both kind of these tortured souls in a way, don't you think? <laughs> and um, so, I mean, they're both kind of on the outside in a sense, and that's what I think kind of brings them together a little bit. Um, One yeah. of the great things about your dynamic on the show is that it's what's been pushing the hard work forward. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Like yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, uh, it. I guess. Uh, uh, well, I don't know when it happened when we became like a detective cop drama <laughs> with 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 romance. But um, yeah, I think both of them have a, a a real appreciation and nostalgia and fondness for a more pure or better version of Riverdale, a more wholesome version of Riverdale, and so I think that yearning to sort of prove that it can still be a place that is good and not some sort of place of darkness is something that drove them both to really truly wanting to see it take that iteration once again a more a more childlike a more beautiful um flowery kind of iteration and i think that that similar passion is also the thing that sort of brought them close at the end of the day and i, I think there's there's truth in that Hi, I'm Hi. Ava. Hey. Hi. Um, so we're at WonderCon today, and the whole word wonder just brings me back to my childhood. So if you could elaborate, what's the importance of remaining wondrous and having that sense of neoteny while also being in the entertainment in industry, which of course can be very cutthroat? Wow. Wondrous. <laughs> well, I think as actors, the you have to have this like passion and lust for life and experiences and telling stories so I think shut up so I think <laughs> like having having the need to tell stories kind of relates to that like in my when you say wondrous I think like wondrous someone who's like being fascinated by like storytelling and us as actors I think we're storytellers so even though it is a very cutthroat business and you get rejected a lot and have to deal with a lot of doors in your face it's just a matter of staying true to the fact that you're an artist and you came here to tell a story right. and and that's what we try to do at the end of the day well you do it beautifully yeah. and yeah. I love the show Thanks. 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 thank you so much I know that if you guys the the what? <laughs> 
Yes, we do know. I mean, look, even now, you're you're charting into territory. I'm sure they would not want us talking about. But uh, uh, to answer probably a question that's on a lot of people's minds is, the audience knows and will know who the killer is. The town will know who the killer is. And that narrative arc will be resolved season one. Yeah. So it's not something that's going to span however Season many seasons. Season. It, it sees closure. Have yeah. the writers and the producers spoken to you guys about season two? And yeah. Yes. We just kind of started talking about it and how there's going to be a new mystery involved. And sure. that mystery kind of is started in the finale of our season one. So, right. so As they think, often are. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that I really love about the show is that it's tackled a lot of real social issues like slut shaming and illicit relationships. Is there any social issue that you'd like to see tackled in season two? Uh, drug use, probably. Drug use? Youth drug use, um, which is obviously super prevalent. Um, but that's a, that's a tricky scenario. I mean, because drug representation, especially on TV, has a bunch of legal issues that are involved with it. So I'm sure... I'm sure there's going to be a lot of roadblocks for something like that. But yeah, I think that would be interesting. I think we're going to dive into Betty's mental health issues as well. Um, that's explored a lot more in season two. That's what we're planning on. So that's important. Thank you yeah. so much. No problem.